Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodman, and over there we have John. Hey. Due to time constraints, we had to do this video via virtual, which probably is going to happen the rest of this weekend, well, until Colorado or Nashville are out of the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because, personally, I'll get into that later. But today's show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 202 West Hart Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. Today, the Nashville Predators took on the Carolina Hurricanes. That. Nashville was outshot 38-24, to beating the faceoff circle 51-49. Both teams were over on the power play. Over three for Nashville, over five for Carolina. Nashville had 14 penalty minutes to Carolina 16. There were 56 hits for Carolina to Nashville's 49. Block shots were even a piece at 13 a piece, and giveaways were 13 to 10 Carolina. That being said, scoring in the first period. Phil Forsberg with his first of the playoffs with an assist from Johansson and Ellis. Y'all know the drill. <laughs> it's the beginning of the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Stats reset. Yeah. All right. Also scoring in the first, Timu, Ter Timu Teravainen. His first with an assist from Pesci and Lorenz. Uh, Lorenz is a former Everblade. All right, then scoring in the second period, Jordan Stahl with his first with an assist from Pesci. Also scoring in the second, Eric Halla with an assist from Duchesne and Carrier. Scoring in the third, Nino Niederreiter with an assist from Nikas and Troche. Also scoring in the third, Jordan Stahl. Also scoring in the third, Andrei Svechnikov. Both of those two, Stahl and Svechnikov, were unassisted. Goaltenders in net for Nashville, uh, UC Saros. He stopped 33 of 37 with a point eight nine two save percentage. In net for Carolina was Alex Nadalkovich. He stopped 22 of 24 with a .917. Your referee is where Garrett Rank, Kelly Sutherland, and Jake Brink. Uh, linesmen were Ryan Gibbons and Libor Shuknek. Shuknek. Head coach for Nashville is John Hines. Head coach for Carolina is Rod Prendemore. You guys know this because you've watched us before. Oh, wait. That was like last two Saturdays ago. Anyways, yeah. scratches, for, scratches for Nashville were Tyler Lewington, Matt Benning, Brad Richardson, Rem Pitlick. Nick Cousins, David Ferris, Rocco Gabaldi, Ily Tolvin, and Jeremy Davies, Michael McCarron, Dante Fabro, and Casimir Cascasillo. <laughs> Scratches for Carolina with Cedric Parquet, Max McCormick, Kirshore, Joachim Ryan, uh, Antoine B uh, Boudou, Boubou, uh, uh Maxim LaJoy, Joey Keenan, James Reimer, Jake Gardner, Roland McNow, uh, Ryan Suzuki, and Morgan Kiki. So, obviously, Nashville lost. They fell 5-2. If you yep. see what I'm wearing... You will obviously understand there's, I could do this with two jerseys I have. And that was a choice. I chose this one because it was the closest one to me. <laughs> <laughs> but here's my personal opinion. Two of your top scorers, you're going up against a stacked offensive team. You're not going to be able to match them with grit alone. You need to have some skill no. out there. 
They right. decided that right now it's training camp in preseason. Let's try new things, not things that have worked. Right. You got to stick to what works. Especially if you're in the first place. Your, your first mistake was making that mistake. Your second mistake was putting lines out there with no chemistry. Now, I understand that there's no, not much chemistry there, but you can't also knock just the coaching staff. That was a coaching mistake as far as the lineups go. But right. The that the guys played with tonight was not very good either. No. They beat to the puck, they, but like I was saying, the matchups are one thing, but you got to be able to adjust to that. Right, you do. And unfortunately, they didn't. Right. <laughs> so let's get into who got beat the worst. Brandlin got beat three times. Johansson got beat twice. Ellis got beat three times. Harper got beat once. Branson got beat once. And Yossi got beat three times. Looking at it from a stat point, of when you are playing in the playoffs, everything is reset. So when right. you reset everything, much like this, you see how Grimaldi, you're not playing, guess what? Next game, put him out there. He was one of your top point getters. He scored right. the game the last time they played. Mm -hmm. Overland has four points against this team. You don't play him. You don't play Brad Richardson, who also played well in that last game against Carolina. Look, I right. understand you're playing your guys to see what you got, but you're not even trying at this point. To You saw what you had, and you did nothing with it. When you right. have something in your hands, and you just go, I don't want this here. What's that say to a guy like Tolvanen? Right. right. Tolvanen does not have to resign here next year. They can slap no, the he on him, and they can somebody can offer him an astronomical amount of money, and he can be gone, and you are sitting there with pick. Right. And you have no... All the work you put into developing Tolvin, and guess what? Now that goes to somebody else. Right. You know, I mean, you're really looking at it at this point. If this is the way we're going to do things, then might as well kiss the season goodbye because, you know, the players, yeah, they lacked effort, but how are you going to get – now you got to get momentum from literally just getting shot in the face. Right. It's – it's, it's up to the coaching staff to fix the problem between now and then. Tonight, it happened. Nothing we can do about it. There are right. some games that can be played. Uh, programming warning, I believe uh, that uh, I will not yet again. Uh, just so you folks know, um, Sundays are my busy days during the summertime. Normally, I'm not here at home. Right. Um, Sundays, I'm at Slinger Speedway uh, helping out TNT Racing. Um, and I'm not going to let them down. I'm trying not to let both down, but it's impossible. By the way, way to go, Colorado. You scored again. <laughs> Woohoo. <laughs> I know, it's hard. It's with my team on, man. I'm trying. <laughs> uh, Land the Scott. From Rantanen and Gerard. Nice. Oh, and McKinnon. How oh, you get three assists on that one, but really. Right. Pass, pass, shot from the point and a tip. So, but then again, uh, as we put it, really, it is really hard to put it in a position Look, if we get past the first round, is there any way we're getting past Florida or Tampa? And if we get past right. that, how are we going to beat the East? Yeah. Like, I mean, like, 
the realistic part of it is I'd rather have a middle of the pack draft pick that get bounced late in the playoffs and then next year not even make them. Right. You know, Minnesota looks good. It looks like we're going to be going back to a rebuild at some point. Yeah. We're going to have to because this, this, whatever we're doing, it just isn't working. And, and that may mean Poyle going. Right. But that's a decision that will be made after the playoffs. Now, they could go on a yep, run and win the whole flippant thing. I'm not going to complain, but I'm just saying it the way it looks, it looks bleak because right. they lacked motivation, they lacked effort, and they lacked hustle. That's on the player. In first period, I thought they showed up to play, and then it's like they flattened out. Yeah, they gave everything in the first. They, I mean, you're talking over 100 hits. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. You're used to doing the hitting. And then when you have a guy like Janot on the third line, okay, look, I'm not bashing Tanner Janot, but I'm telling you this right now. He is not – he worked better with Sissons and – Trennan, not having right. Olivier over there. That was where you made your mistake. You should have put Olivier with the third line. Right. But there was, because there was, they played together the last game. Now you switch up the guys and everybody doesn't know what to do. There's nobody that right. has the communication with to boost each other because the chemistry is not there. I mean, right. some of it is the coaching, some of it is the players, and if you don't know a guy, how are you supposed to boost him? Yeah. I mean, yeah, they've been in the locker room all year, but you're not used to sitting next to that guy. Right, you're not. You know, it's just one of those situations. I, I don't know what to say at this point, other than it looks like it's going to look it looked last year. And, right. and, and, the, and the other thing, I want to see something, because I'm kind of curious. In the playoffs, UC Soros is one and four. Average yeah. goals against average of 2.62. Last season, he averaged the goals against average of 3.22. This year, it's already at 4.5. Yeah. But I'm just saying, it's it's not looking good for Nashville. Um, right. So, post game comments. Let's get into that while we're at it. Because post game comments were kind of interesting. Yeah. And these came straight from the coach. So, John Hines said to some reporters. Uh, they have some, we have some players who, like, we have play, some players not in the lineup tonight who are ready to play. Okay, so you got guys who are in the lineup, not in the lineup, who are ready to play. And you got guys in the lineup who are not ready to play. Yeah. Tonight's game will go through the evaluation process and will be made, made decisions for game two. Yeah. Also said, no matter who's in the lineup, Nashville did not play well enough to win tonight. It says his team played hard, but they have to stay out of the box. Well, staying yeah. out of the box would have mattered had they scored on the power play, but they didn't. Right. Lost right. on even strength. So you're 
comments kind of go because you're saying, okay, we need to stay out of the box. What's staying out of the box going to get you if you're in, in, you're not getting it five on five and you can't win games. Right. And then on top of that, you got guys like Tolvin and who are hungry to show that they're ready. You got guys like yep. Capaldi who want the spotlight and can show you he yep. can do it in a bigger scene than what he had last year because Heinz right. put him in the playoffs last year. How'd that go for us? Oh, yeah, first round exit. Didn't play Tolvin in the playoffs either last year. First round exit. Yeah. So if 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 it's if it's his thing to go into the playoffs and and get kicked out in the first round, you're gonna be meeting the same fate Barry Trotz did getting fired. Because Trotz yeah. in the playoffs four years in a row got bounced in the first round by the Red Wings. Then again, that Red Wings team was really good. Yeah. So when I sit here and look at it, Nashville's got some decisions to be made not only in their front office, but in the locker room as well, because you're talking here now, you got up and covers, and then you got veterans signed to multiple years, and then you, what are you going to do? Kick guys down to the AHL next year? Right. Either A, you're going to buy guys out, or B, trade them. And knowing them, they'll trade the veteran and try and sign guys back. Right. They'll try. They'll trade the young guys and try and sign guys back. Well, what's that going to do if, if it if it doesn't win you games? Oh, well, let's trade right. Tampa you know, and Olivier because, well, they didn't show up in the in the four playoff games we played, and uh, Duchesne and all them had points that don't mean nothing if you don't win. Right. Duchesne on his goal and his points got lucky to begin with. Be, to be honest, that pass was lucky. It didn't get turned over. Right. You know, I'm just saying, you know, Johansson didn't do much tonight, but at least he was checking and trying. He was the only one with a win percentage in the faceoff. Right. Oh, God. You know, it's just frustrating. It's all hell. Yeah. We're gonna let you guys go. We're gonna try and enjoy the rest of our evening. See y'all later. Yeah. yeah.